Hello and welcome to this first week of Advent here at First Christian Church. It is a joy to welcome you to worship today. Today I'm joined by our videographer, Kelly Terrell, and also by our musician and lay reader, Wayne Duncan. So we have come here for this first Sunday of Advent to welcome you into this holiday season. Do make note that we are continuing with in-person worship on Sundays at 10.30 a.m., but we require that everyone coming mask and physically distance. And we have hand sanitizers around and do urge you to use those and wash hands frequently so that we all can continue staying well, not only those worshiping here, but those of us here on staff as well. Also want to remind you that as December begins, you will be receiving your first edition of the December Messenger that will be coming out that week as well with highlights of our preparations for the Advent season and activities going on here at First Christian Church in Milton. As always, we invite you to continue to follow us on our Facebook page and our Instagram, and also you can check out the latest events and our calendar on our website at fcclincoln.org. Now I invite you to open your hearts as we hear God's word read and proclaimed. Our reading today is from the Hebrew Bible, and it's from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 64, verses 1 through 9. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As when fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have become, all become like one who is unclean and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We are fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. This ends our reading. Thank you, Wayne. Professor Brad Braxton, in his reflections on our Isaiah text for lectionary homiletics, makes a striking comment about this text. He says, in the midst of penetrating hopelessness, the prophet cries out to God. The prophet writes to a weary people that have been now in exile for decades, and the prophet brings them a word of hope. The prophet tells them that even in the midst of the penetrating hopelessness in which they have lived now for decades, God's promise comes and liberation will return. The ancient Israelites are told that their time in exile is ending and soon they will be able to return to their homeland and to their temple. Of course, part of the challenge is that as they make those preparations to return, they're very much aware of their own hopelessness and of the struggles that they have had in their recent past their grief of what they had lost, and their anxiety about what they will find when they return home weigh heavy on their hearts. What will the land be like? What will the temple in which they have worshipped God be like 
after its destruction by the conquerors. What will they find when they return home? Many questions weigh heavy on their hearts and in their minds, perhaps the paramount of those is, will the time in exile have changed them? And will the relationship they have with God be different now? They're becoming keenly aware that even their very identity, who they thought themselves to be in the past and who they will become, has changed. And they struggle to know who they are now after this experience of exile. Sadly, I suspect in many ways, as we move through these days of COVID-19, we may find ourselves feeling much like the ancient Israelites, having a sense of having been in exile. The ways of life we had known before are gone, and we embrace a new reality that sadly seems to march on month after month. We continue to grow weary, frustrated, and angry that this time of COVID continues, and the numbers seem to skyrocket upward instead of going down as we all would hope for. So we too, like the ancient Israelites, find ourselves in the midst of a global pandemic, the midst of a global exile. And we, like the ancient Israelites, might ask ourselves many of the same kinds of questions they ask. Will we find that we are changed by this year that we have spent dealing with COVID-19? Is our relationship with God different now? And who will we be when we emerge on the other side of this pandemic? And we will emerge on the other side of this pandemic. We face, much as the ancient Israelites do, did a penetrating hopelessness. And of course, sadly, life goes on and there are many trials that we still face in our everyday lives. Many of us have dealt with illness or injury. Many things have beset us in our human bodies. Many trials have come our way that have nothing to do with COVID-19. And sadly, of course, we know that death marches on as well. Not only death for the quarter of a million Americans who have died now from COVID, but death that comes often in no relation to that pandemic. And now as we face the holidays, we may find ourselves in another place of penetrating hopelessness. We cannot celebrate the holidays in the ways in which we are accustomed. They will look totally different. And how will we embrace the hope? The power of Advent is that it reminds us that Advent holds intention, both hopelessness and hope. That in the Advent season, we are invited to embrace that paradox. We are invited to acknowledge and become aware of the penetrating hopelessness that might feel our, fill our own lives and that fills our world today. But the prophet reminded the ancient Israelites that their time in exile was coming to an end and that they would return to their homeland and temple. And we are reminded in this Advent season that it is God's faithfulness that remains with us and that hope is an integral foundational part of this season. We are invited to embrace this paradox of penetrating hopelessness and hope. Generally, the way that we are invited to do that during Advent is to kind of slow down and take a little time. And sadly, the virus has kind of taken care of that for us. So how could we use this time to slow down, to allow ourselves to acknowledge and embrace our penetrating hopelessness so that we might find the hope that is the foundation of this season and our faith? So we are invited to continue to do things that help us hear the prophet's cry, that help us acknowledge and be aware of our own penetrating hopelessness, and that help us claim God's hope 
and summer. As in past years, we continue to offer a devotional for people during this season. Here at First Christian Church, hopefully you have already received your copy of our Advent study, written by our General Minister President, Reverend Terry Fordland. He's written a wonderful devotion for us this year, and if you have not for some reason gotten your copy yet, do contact the church office and we'll see that you get one. This year I'm excited to say that we have a couple opportunities for you to interact with this devotion. You can, of course, do that on your own at home. Hopefully each day of Advent you will take a few moments to read the scripture passage that uh, Reverend Owens highlights for us and read for meditation. But we also have a couple opportunities if you'd like to have some time to talk about what you're reading and talk about what's unfolding for you in this Advent season. Wednesday mornings at 9 a.m., there'll be a regional offering with different pastors taking the lead for this study as we move through the Wednesdays of Advent. And at 6 p.m. on Wednesdays, I will be offering a study for our First Christian members and friends and family. So if you'd like to join, a, a link for the Zoom meeting will be sent out, and you can come on and have a few moments with others to reflect on how you are embracing the paradox of this season. Of course, as is true for all churches, we will continue with worship throughout this Advent season. It'll look a little bit different. We will continue as long as we are able with in-person worship on Sunday mornings, but we are working on some changes for our uh, online presence for our video worship. So do kind of keep an eye out for that. We are hoping at some point to get recordings in our sanctuary, but we're just gonna, we kind of got to take it as it comes to us this season. But we will continue as we have throughout this paradoxical year, we will continue to offer worship opportunities as well. The challenge is that as we enter these holiday seasons, we like the ancient Israelites may be keenly aware of our sense of grief and loss. We may be sorely, painfully aware of the things that are not a part of our holiday season this year. Don't run away from those feelings. We are invited to embrace them, to acknowledge them, and then to consider, but what is the word of hope that comes to us in the midst of our penetrating hopelessness? The word of hope is that God comes to us in the form of a small child born in a major in Bethlehem. God inhabits flesh and lives among us. Christ knows the penetrating hopelessness that often fills our human lives, but reminds us that hopelessness is not the end. God's hope, presence, and love are what bind us to one another and bind us to God. May this paradoxical season of Advent allow you to embrace both the penetrating hopelessness and the hope that is ours through Christ. Amen. Now I invite you to join your hearts with mine in prayer. O oh, holy God, we 
come before you with hearts full of penetrating hopelessness. Our lives are not what we would hope them to be, and our world continues to be ravaged by the pandemic of COVID-19. Oh God, we are so aware of many who struggle with this virus, those who are painfully ill, and the quarter of a million people that have died in our country alone. The holiday season is upon us, O oh God, and it does not look at all like we are accustomed to it looking. We are not necessarily with the people we would want to share it with. We are not doing the many things that we are accustomed to doing in this season. Help us, O oh God, embrace your invitation to be aware of this hopelessness and to know, O oh God, that we can place it before you and that you give us hope. Our hope is in the reality, O oh God, that you chose to come and live among us, that you chose to embrace humanity, that you chose through your son, Jesus Christ, to know the penetrating hopelessness of life so that you might bring us the great joy of hope. O oh God, be with us now as this Advent season begins and help us in these strange times to make time for you for your holy word, and for one another. Be with us in all the ways that we strive to connect to you, O oh God, and help this be a season of rejuvenation and joy, even amidst the hopelessness. It is perhaps, O oh God, this penetrating hopelessness that makes the hope we have even more vibrant and alive. Oh God, we give thanks that we can place all these prayers before you, that we can share what is in our hearts and minds. And now, oh God, we turn to you as people of faith have done now through the centuries as we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this period of worship today. I hope that it is helping you begin your Advent season with a sense of joy and Again, do follow us on our Facebook page and Instagram, and don't forget to check out our website at fccmenton.org. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the companionship and power of the Holy Spirit abide with you this Advent season and forevermore. Amen.